We develop emotional relationships with sort of street level markets like Harvard Square. We attach to it, we love it, and then it breaks our heart when it changes. These markets give us a tremendous sense of stability and security in the world, a sense of who we are, who we're connected to, our sense of community. The reason I decided to write a book on Harvard Square was just that uh, it's a place I've always loved. My father and I started a routine when I was uh, in elementary school of coming into Harvard Square every Sunday morning. It was this sort of sacred ritual for us that we kept up for years. And we would just get breakfast in the square, we would go to the newsstands, wander into the bookstores, and it was just this really special time that we had together. So it was a place that was really sort of important to me. This just feels like home. When my husband and I kind of decided to settle back in Harvard Square around 2014, you know, there was so much in the square that reminded me of what I had always loved about it. But there were these changes. I was hearing a lot about them, I was noticing them, and I was also noticing I was having feelings about them. And so I started really, um, you know, kind of just worrying about what was going on in the square. I wanted to understand it better. One thing that really helped me kind of un understand this was something that happened in Harvard Square, which was Black Ink, which was a little boutique kind of gift store, was closing because it had a new landlord that had come in and the landlord had kind of raised the rent and the store could no longer afford to be there. The owner, Susan, did this sort of very seemingly simple thing. She just put out some white poster paper on the interior windowsill of the store, and she told people, if you want to leave a message, feel free to kind of express your feelings. And something amazing happened, which was hundreds and hundreds of people started stopping by and leaving these messages. And a lot of the messages were just these sort of love letters to the store, say, you know, about the kind of comfort and the community that they had gotten from the store. Some of them linked to the closing of Black Ink to the closing of other stores and sort of said, you know, the soul of Harvard Square is lost through the, the closure of these stores. And so that's when I started to realize, okay, there's some things going on here that I'd like to understand better because I am a sort of professor at a business school who studies markets and knows that they change all the time. And here was I getting very upset about something that if I put my academic hat on, I could sort of look at and say, well, this is just a market changing. And I began to do a lot of historical research. So um, the Cambridge Public Library has newspapers going back to the late 1800s. And one of the first things I came across was information on the marketplace in 1920. And at that time, a large syndicate of New York investors had come in and bought the building across the street and almost immediately doubled the rent. And it led to the eviction and closure of some businesses there. The community was incredibly upset. It was kind of, there were meetings held, it was mourned, you know, in the papers. Um, people said the character of the square was, you know, kind of not what it used to be. So to me, that was really interesting because, um, you know, kind of, it meant that since the early 1900s, people have been saying it's not what it used to be. But during all of that time, there was also a group of people who were in the process of falling in love with it. So that gives me comfort, because that's still happening. 